Hi, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.com, as well as a few other websites out there. I just wanted to talk about some non-technical certifications, but that um, pertain to IT people, because what I tend to find happens with um, my students and other people that I've coached over the years is all they do is think about technical, 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 which is um, it's good in a way that you can be focused on becoming a Cisco expert or cloud expert or whatever you choose. However, what uh, people can find is they actually get themselves stuck in a box and all they're doing is all they have is one particular skill set and they end up having a weakness in uh, other skills that um, you really do need in the IT industry. So my advice is uh, don't just be a geek. Even if you pick one other skill to complement your, your technical uh, skills with, with whatever you're doing. So it just makes you a more rounded uh, person, it especially helps you when you're trying to progress in whatever role for your company. If you're looking for other work or employment or freelancing. And um, it will also help if you ever come to be headhunted by other companies when they're looking for a particular skill set and you show a bit more balance and just being able to do one thing really well. So one of the first things I recommend you uh, learning is project management. Obviously this is an entire career in its own right and there was a point where I just was going to be a project manager but I ended up choosing Cisco uh, back in 2002 as my um, speciality. So if you can add technical skills plus, um, plus project management this is gold to most employees because what it means is you can interface with the technical team, the project team, your suppliers, the management, all the other business people who are, are required to make a project actually happen. If you're just the technical person then you'll obviously just be dealing with the technical side and probably won't get involved in the project. So it's a really great skill to have. Uh, you can also look into freelancing if you can manage uh, uh, projects such as um, service level agreements, other deliverables, obviously the uh, finance, the budget and um, all the outsourced companies and suppliers and obviously your internal resources. If you want to look into managing projects what I started doing was volunteering for small things even auditing stuff that's going on at work or maybe just interfacing with somebody else in, in another department and then builds up your confidence and your skills and your experience and obviously as with anything I recommend getting some sort of certification it doesn't have to be a difficult one probably look at something vendor neutral just to start with I recommend the CompTIA project plus just to um, just to learn all the basics the other thing is governance I know it doesn't sound exciting the definition here it's a process that ensures the effective and efficient use of IT in enabling an organization to achieve its goals. So it may not sound exciting, but it's actually crucial in order to interface the technical side of the business with the um, business objectives and the operations. So it's really important that you have an understanding of what it is and what it does. And if it's something that you can do, again, it's a great skill to have. Uh, I recommend out of all the things you can look at, obviously you've got governance for um, protecting data, security, data protection, and whichever laws, rules and regulations that your company has to follow in your country. But look at the ITIL Foundation Certificate. This looks at your business processes and how they interface with your technical side of your business. The next thing is cloud. Now I know cloud can be technical, but you've also got um, the non-technical side understanding what it is, what it can do for your business and how to uh, get both working together. I recommend to start with you look at the uh, business side. So how does cloud help you with your business continuity? Um, do you need to add it in order to make sales for your business uh, to your customer base? And uh, what financial impact, what benefits will it have for your business? So again, these are a couple of certifications I recommend you look at. Look at the CompTIA Cloud Essentials, which is a very basic exam and it's vendor neutral. Uh, also consider the AWS Practitioner Essentials. Next thing is security policy and compliance, and this affects all of us actually. 
we all, um, even working for my small business, I have to comply with uh, protecting customers' data. I actually use uh, credit card processing companies, but I still have to have certificates in place and um, I could be audited and, and have to uh, show what I'm doing. And if you work for any um, small to medium or larger business, you'll have um, the same responsibilities, but in a bigger scale. So again, there's technical and non-technical sides for this, and you can um, look into more uh, stuff like the CIWSP and uh, high level compliance. Look at policies for new staffs. Could you develop something for um, what security um, procedures they need to follow? Can they bring in USBs? Can they plug them in? What data can they uh, take from the site, if anything? What sites can they visit? Complying with your legal duty, which I've already mentioned. Uh, keeping your company out of trouble. A lot of companies uh, and bosses of companies don't have the time or the interest in, in learning what they actually should be doing. So it's something you could look at doing. And also uh, who trains their staff as to what they can comply with? How do they prevent, for example, downloading uh, malware? A lot of people will open up attachments and not even know what they're doing. So that's something, again, you could look at. As a, a starting block, look at your Microsoft MTA security uh, or the Security Plus. Actually, this is the same syllabus. I think the CompTIA has a couple of more modules added on, but you could actually um, study for the Security Plus and then, then take the Microsoft MTA exam. So you've got two certifications for the same amount of work. Now, finally, uh, network design. This is one of my absolute top favorite subjects, and I'm going to do another separate video about this another time. It's kind of semi-technical because you don't actually do any hands-on. You're not plugging cables in. You just need to understand how the design principles work. Uh, when you're designing networks, you'll be in meetings with the top senior management of the company, talking about what they want to achieve, what their budgets are, what suppliers they want to work with and generally speaking you could also be involved especially if you've got some project skills with actually flying out to meet vendors going to exhibitions uh, attending workshops it's, it's all really exciting stuff and it's um, it's really rewarding and it certainly beats sitting at the computer all day long if you're doing just technical stuff so the idea if, uh, is to create secure robust network designs using design principles Cisco is probably, as far as I know, the only vendor that offers design certifications. And so you would follow their principles and methodologies. So the exam I recommend you look at, certainly to start with, is the Cisco CCDA, Cisco Certified Design Associate. Then there's a higher level exam for the professional, and then there's the advanced exam for your um, CCDE. So... Um, in summary, I personally recommend you have a balance between technical and non-technical skills. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of things which we've, we've talked about. I've only covered five. There's obviously more. Uh, you can uh, ask for more money if you're taking on more responsibilities and you're more valuable to the business. And obviously, uh, big companies make a lot of people redundant. Cisco made thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people redundant when I worked for them. But if you've got other skills that are valuable to the organization, you're going to be more protected for this. So uh, I'll give you a view in a minute. Um, as with all my videos at the end, I'll just explain the $1 offer. We've got all the courses I mentioned and around 20 more on howtonetwork.com. Uh, have a look at the website, but if you actually want to use the offer, you need to use this URL, howtonetwork.com forward slash YouTube. That gets you access to all, um, all the courses, unlimited practice exams for all of the courses I've mentioned and more live Cisco racks that are on 24 seven and uh, expert support from myself and other experts. So um, thanks for listening. I do strongly recommend you look at one of those five um, options to start with. Take a technical, take a technical exam or two and then look at something that's non-technical and then go back to technical again. All right. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.